Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a single game from the Pump Revolution Pump Game at Top Gun Paintball in Cream Ridge, New Jersey on July 19th, 2015. For whatever reason, this file recorded without any sound, so I'll narrate the game instead. This game was played on Top Gun's LEGO Speedball Field, that's their big speedball field. It was about 12 on 12 or 15 on 15, and this field can actually accommodate that many players quite comfortably. This day was extremely hot, it was about 95 degrees by 11 a.m., and it felt like 105. So for most of the day, I was holding myself back a little bit, and I didn't want to go all out in the interest of being able to play all day rather than having to stop partway through. But I decided that I wanted to play one game just completely gonzo, and this is that game. So I decided to just go as far as I could, as fast as I could, and see what I could do. So here's how it played out. Things move at a pretty brisk pace, so I'm going to show this game uncut. You can see the snake off to the right there, past that blue bunker that we call a rocket, because it looks like a rocket with four fins. There are four of those scattered throughout the field, and they'll come into play later as well. So I'm going to go for the snake off the break, but I'm not going to reach the snake. I'm going to have to stop at this bunker just uh, before the snake because the opposing team has a player at the center 50. So I need to try to keep him in and also tell everybody that there's a player there. Right now he's the only player I can see, but I let everyone know where he is. I also need to reload. This will be the first of several reloads in this game. Uh, because I went through a whole tube of paint just keeping that guy in because he was shooting at me uh, first over the top, then eventually through the crack. So I check right here to see if anyone's putting down that lane. They're not. Check back to the middle, a couple of shots to put that player back in, then back out to the right and up to the snake. Now, because I'm in the snake, I'm in a good spot because I'm covered from the front and I can shoot cross field to my left. Unfortunately, from here, I have no angle on the guy in the center 50, and when I look, I can only see one other player in the back left, but going to shoot him exposes myself to fire from the center 50. So I check the right again, make sure no one is looking down. They're not, so I immediately bump up to S2. Now I'm just short of the 50. I still don't have an angle on the opposing center 50, but at least there's that other uh, piece of pipe in between us, so I can lean out and look for other players without worrying about getting shot from there. But if I was to bump up to the next position in the snake, then I would be exposed from the center 50, so I can't bump up quite yet. You'll also notice here I switch to lefty. This is a good example of why ambidexterity is so important. I can get a much better angle and play much tighter by shooting lefty towards the back left corner than by shooting righty. A teammate just eliminated the opponent at the center 50, which means I can now safely bump up to S3 into the opposing side of the field. The first thing I do here is check the center 50 and the far 50 just to make sure there are no opponents there. Then I can set about looking at the rest of the field. I'm going to pause for a minute here to give you the lay of the land because things are going to start happening much faster. And just in this field of view, there are four different opposing players. The first you can't actually see. He's in the rocket at the opposing right 30 or so. That's that bunker with the tall blue section. Behind him in the back left corner in an orange shirt is the second opponent. You could see just a little sliver of the orange there. And then at the opposing center 20, you have an opponent behind that small square bunker. His left leg is sticking out. And just behind him and to the right, in the back row of opposing bunkers, in the right center, or my left center, the opposing right center, is the fourth opponent. All of these players are going to come into play very soon. The first thing I'm going to do here is eliminate the opponent at the center 20, because he was the closest and that was the easiest shot. But a different opponent immediately fills into the center 30 to fill the gap left by the player I just eliminated. The player at the rocket is now extremely exposed and we start trading shots, but now obviously I have to reload. And at this point I have two worries. First is that the player that just filled into the center 30 can actually have a pretty good angle on me if I was to lean out to target the rocket or the back left corner. And second, that some of the shots from the player in the rocket are coming very close. So I'm not sure this is the best position to be in. To deal with that, I check right and see that no one's covering that side, so the natural move is to bump up into S4, now well on the opposing side of the field. Now I have a much better angle on that opponent that filled in at the center 30, so I'm going to deal with that player first, then I will worry about the rest of the field. First the center 30, again you could see a much better angle here. Eliminate that player, now I can focus my attention on the player in the rocket who I have to deal with before I can deal with the player in the back left corner and in the left center in the back row. I have to do this because if I was to lean out to target those further inward players, the outer player is going to have a good angle on 
my head, uh, my shoulder, and my marker and outer arm. So I have to target the outermost player first, then deal with the innermost players. Note that during this time, while I'm reloading, I'm also looking backwards and communicating with my teammates to get the lay of the land to my front because I can't see anything up there. And I'm looking to see if there's possibly an opportunity to bump up from here, but due to the players far out on the left, the next position up from the snake is not yet safe. And now back to communicating with my teammates, as you can see one of whom has made it up into the center 50, he's going to come into play a little bit later, while I continue to duke it out with the opposing player in the back left corner and also in the rocket. You can see their paint splattering on my bunker, so we're both landing shots very close to each other. It's just a matter of who's going to be able to arc one in there sooner and have it break rather than bounce. I'll note here that it was a very bouncy day with the temperature and humidity, and while I haven't taken any bounces yet in this game, I will soon. But first, I'm able to eliminate the opposing player in the rocket. I finally landed one that broke. And I also put the back left corner in and get him to look away for a second, which gives me the opportunity to catch the left center opponent out a little bit. You can see in just a second, he's going to be hanging out a little bit further than he should. I don't know that he knew I could see him, and I'm able to eliminate him as well. And now I can focus most of my attention on that player in orange in the back left corner. Now that most of the players on the far left side of the field are out, I'm interested once again in possibly bumping up past the snake. You'll see that bunker in a moment doesn't have any protection to the left, so I have to make sure there's nobody out that way before I make the move, and also that nobody to my front could possibly eliminate me while I do it. Before I end up doing that though, I turn my attention back to the opposing player in the back left corner, and end up trading even more paint with him. First I have to get this one paintball out of a tube, then I can reload the full tube, and then I will return my attention to that opposing player in the back left corner. At this point in the game, in addition to having a player up at the center 50, I believe there's also a friendly player behind me in the snake, and you could see one there at the stand-up bunker just at the top of the snake. So in addition to me being this far up the field, we also have other teammates that are moving up the field nicely as well. So I trade a bit more paint here with the player in the back left corner, but eventually I do eliminate that person during this exchange, which allows for subsequent moves up the field. Now that I know that person has been eliminated, I start to hang out on the right a little bit, and seeing that I'm not taking any fire, I decide to bump up to that stand-up. That person walking past is a ref, not a player. Now I'm at the stand-up, I am taking fire from the center of the field in the back row, and there are players off to the right as well, though I can't see any of them quite yet. When I finally do turn to look out the right, there is an opposing player in the stand-up bunker in the back row behind that rocket, so I have indirect cover from that opponent, but there is also an opponent in that rocket. I don't know he's there, and he doesn't know I'm there. There's a lot of communication happening here as we attempt to coordinate moves up the field, but one of my teammates takes matters into his own hands and comes around to occupy that rocket. I don't know if he realized there was an opponent in there, but when he pops out to take out the friendly player, I shot him. My teammate probably shot him as well, so now we occupy that rocket. But a lot is happening here. Another opposing player moved to the back right corner, and a friendly player just ran down the tape line to eliminate him. I think they traded out. And now I bump up to occupy the rocket, and as advertised, I take a bounce right off my hand while I'm making that move. So a lot just happened in a very short amount of time. You may also have noticed when I made that run, an opponent in the back left corner dropped from the second row of bunkers back to the back row of bunkers. So now there are opponents in the two or three middle back row bunkers. I'm trading paint with one of them. And uh, you'll see in a second I get a paint check called on my knee, but it's from like way earlier in the morning, so I don't have a hit there and uh, I now have to reload, and by the time I finish reloading, this game is going to be just about over because our left side has also moved up. So by the time I pop out of the bunker here to kind of get back in the action, that is the end of the game. So thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. That was a big pump-only speedball game on Top Gun's LEGO Speedball Field from July 19th, 2015 at the Pump Game put on by Pump Revolution. Thanks for watching.